Um, today we're going to be talking about and wrapping up our week of social media and the law. Um, and what we're going to be talking about today are issues that you need to think about if you outsource um, any of your social media. And when I say any, I mean if you outsource creation of, of, of images, if you outsource to someone to actually do the social media post for you, if you are outsourcing anything, we're going to be talking about things you need to do in today's video. Um, and so that's what the focus is today. It's going to wrap up our social media theme week. Um, next week, we're going to turn to course creation and legal issues you need to think about if you're creating a course um, uh, with a focus, especially on paid courses, but it'll apply equally if you're doing any kind of lead magnet courses or free courses or master classes or anything like that. But we'll talk about all those issues next week. So today we're wrapping up social media. Next week, we move on to course creators. Um, before we get there, though, again, wanted to remind you, I'm Bobby Clink. I'm an online entrepreneur and an intellectual property lawyer. Uh, I um, started as a lawyer, uh, had a business or had a, a law firm, you know, but I've been doing intellectual property law for a while. And I kept seeing a problem over and over again, um, which was entrepreneurs who had made mistakes early on when they couldn't justify, you know, paying me. And, you know, my rate now is $500 an hour, but, you know, it's always been about $400 an hour or more. So, you know, very quickly, if you hire me, we're talking $10,000 or more. So I understood why these entrepreneurs couldn't afford me at the outset. But the problem was that these were mistakes that were, you know, really devastating their business now. So I, it, it drove me nuts. I was always trying to figure out a way around that and a way to solve that problem. Um, and it took me a while to do it. And, and this Your Online Genius business is my answer to that question. Uh, this is where I provide educational resources to entrepreneurs to help them do it themselves. Uh, I, I don't serve clients directly. I don't engage uh, directly with any clients. I provide the information and provide the resources so that entrepreneurs can at, at least get first steps in place. Um, you know, later on, once they get successful, they should definitely consult with an attorney, whether me or someone else. But, you know, it's better to have something uh, at the beginning, uh, which is the purpose of, of this business. So that, that's who I am. That's what the company is. Um, and, and again, today we're going to be wrapping up social media week. We're talking about uh, the issues that, um, you know, that come up if you're going to outsource um, your social media. And a lot of us do it. Look, outsourcing is great. Um, you know, it's maybe you have a, a, a virtual assistant doing it. Maybe you have a you know, an employee doing it, maybe you have an outside service. There are obviously services out there that you can hire that are companies that, that do this kind of work. So uh, if you fall into any of those categories today, we're talking about what you need to do. Now, there's a couple of different categories of things you need to do. First is one that I have stressed over and over and over and over again that applies not just to social media, but any time you have anyone else doing something for your business, you need to have a written agreement with them. Uh, in this case, what you need is a, a and, and I mean, and, and you obviously, if you hire an outside service, you should probably you need to have a contract with them. But separate from that, you need a written agreement that states that they are transferring all of the intellectual property they're creating for you to your business. And this applies for an outside service, for an employee, for an independent contractor, any of those people. If you don't do that, there's a murky question about whether you own the content. Now, you might win, but you don't want to find yourself having to have a fight about it. So that's why you need a written agreement. You get those written agreements in, in place. There's no question you own the stuff. Uh, and these people, whether it's a company, a contractor, an employee, can't claim to own it anymore because they have transferred it to you. So that's the written agreement. That's the first piece. But the next piece is a broader point that you need to have a social media policy and you should have it even if you're doing your own social media and even if you're doing your own social media, a social media policy has a benefit of, you know, setting parameters for employees in their own conduct um, of social media. Um, this is sadly the week, the week that I'm recording this is it's the Friday um, of the week in which we had the tragedy in Las Vegas. Uh, with the shooter from Mandalay Bay. A and you may have heard about an instance, I think it was a CBS News executive, but a CBS executive of some sort 
Um, and she was actually a lawyer of all things, which, which is strange, but she on her personal social media said something along the lines of, well, I don't have any sympathy for the people who got shot because they're all gun toting Republicans. Um, you know, regardless of your political views, that is a horribly insensitive thing to say. And for CBS News, it was potentially disastrous because there was this backlash. I mean, I started seeing social media posts about this like on Monday. I mean, it was immediately started seeing this. And so they were going to face a backlash in their brand because this employee had said this thing. They terminated her uh, based upon that. Again, uh, I, it's good practice to have a social media policy. You, you can fire someone um, for making a comment like that regardless, because in every state you have the right to fire someone for any reason or no reason. But if you have a contract with them, you might need something that specifically protects you and gives you the right to fire them. Um, but even if you had the right to fire them for it, it's helpful to have them sign this, especially in today's day and age. Uh, maybe this is the old fogey in me that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost 40, I'm not there yet. Uh, but a lot of the folks who are 25 and younger, I found to them, it's just natural to just share everything on social media. And they don't think about the fact that that could have implications. And so it could definitely have implications for your brand, right? If, if one of your employees is out there saying something that could incense your potential customers. So, so that's part of the value of having this policy. It's reminding your employees and your contractors that look, when you post stuff, it's out there and it has consequences and we expect the following things from you. So that you might wanna put into a written policy. But that's separate from what we're talking about today. Today, what we are focused on are the provisions you need to have in there that apply to anyone who is managing your social media for you or has the right or ability to go into your social media profile and, and any of them. And there's a few things you need to have in there. Number one, you need to have a provision that makes clear that they're not going to change the logins or the password or remove any administrative users. Most people wouldn't do that, obviously. But the point is, you need to make sure that even if someone else is managing it for you, you always have access to your social media um, accounts. I actually had this come up, not in the context of an online issue, but and not an employee, but there were these two partners in a partnership um, and they were, they were, you know, uh, separating. And, and the problem was that the social media account was actually for Facebook. I believe the company's Facebook page was under the account of the person who was leaving the business. So we had to figure out a way to actually get that transferred and get him access. There have also been horror stories about employees leaving and refusing to give access to um, li like private LinkedIn groups and things like that. And you're just like, wait a minute, this is, this is crazy. So you need a policy that's signed by anyone who's going to do that, that makes clear you own it. They can't change the logins. They can't change passwords. They cannot take you off the account. So you need that. You also should have something in there about if you have any uh, policies or preferences that come about, or, you know, have to do with language, for example. You might be someone who doesn't have issues with language, um, you know, and, and, you know, again, Gary Vaynerchuk, for example, is obviously someone who's happy to cuss and happy to curse, and that's just his brand. Most of us, that's not our brand, right? And so if it's not, you need to make clear to your employees what your expectations are. And, and again, I think most people wouldn't go about, you know, using, and again, I don't even know what the word, what the number was, what was it, seven words or whatever it were, was for a long time that were unacceptable, but th there might be other ones that are unacceptable to you. And again, you need to listen to what's the language of people. So for example, there might be some words that in your view, and again, that are in wide use, but you say, no, I just, I don't want that word used either because it's borderline or because it could offend people because it could be viewed as uh, in, in some way being offensive to, for example, uh, you know, one gender or a, a, a racial group or something of that nature. So you might want to just say, hey, we, our expectation is that. Again, unless you're outside the norm, I would set an expectation to make clear that, hey, nothing on our company, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, any social media is going to make any comments about politics unless you are in a business about politics. Otherwise, it's just there's really no reason. Now, you might want to do it personally, but that's the kind of thing you generally are not going to want to outsource to anyone else. 
Uh, you might want to set policies if there are things about, um, you know, just general standards that you want to, uh, you know, keep up in images, for example, that you're not going to use images of a certain class or a certain category just because you don't like it. So that's the kind of thing you should set expectations. Uh, again, you should also set expectations about, you know, not being abusive, about not um, being, you know, discriminatory. They seem self-evident, but you should have a written policy if you're outsourcing this um, this job to someone. You also ought to have in that policy a statement that you respect third party intellectual property. Look, I'm an IP lawyer, so I obviously, you know, it's a big deal for me, but separate from that, it can be valuable to you. Now, let's be clear, that agreement is not going to prevent you from potentially getting sued as a matter of law if your employee were to infringe someone's copyright, right? I mean, if, if your employee goes and grabs a Getty image, without licensing it and puts it on your social media, Getty is still going to come after you. But if you have a written policy about it that says, we're not going to do this and I'm going to take action if you do, you know, if, if it's someone other than a Getty, if it's someone else and, and they come to you and you say, hey, wow, I'm sorry, you know, we have a policy against it. You know, I've, you know, I've got this policy in place. I'm going to immediately solve it. The fact that you have that policy in place may at least give some business reason why business person to business person, you're going to be able to convince them, hey, look, I'm sorry, wasn't intentional. It, it's not what we do. Uh, and hopefully that will diffuse the situation. So, you know, that's kind of a business reason. Again, like I said, it's not going to give you legal protection, but hopefully it'll give you some business cover if it comes up. You know, those are the broad contours of what I would put in the policy. Again, you might think of specific issues that you want in there um, because there might be issues that are specifically important to you. And if so, you should have it in a written policy signed by these people. And again, the way we do it is, you know, I have a, um, a just a three page, I think it is document that has the social media policy and there's an acknowledgement form that the employee or contractor would sign acknowledging that they've received it and that they agree to abide by it. And if you have that, again, that's just good practice and, and can be helpful for your business. The big part of it is it's just a reminder to people, um, if nothing else, uh, uh, of the consequences of social media and making mistakes. So if you're going to outsource, you should have that in place. So that's it for today. Uh, again, I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, th th we have a blog post up about social media issues. Again, you can go to youronlinegenius.com forward slash blog. You'll find it pretty easily. Um, so, so that's, uh, one resource we have for you. So you can see, you know, it's about a 4,500 page uh, post about social media legal issues. So, uh, there's a lot of info in there. Hope you found this helpful. Also, I have my, my cheat sheet that you can download. Um, actually I have two cheat sheets. One is a cheat sheet about the, the four mistakes that folks make. And you can get that at mistakes.youronlinegenius.com. Again, mistakes.youronlinegenius.com. And you can download uh, this cheat sheet that talks about kind of the four biggest mistakes that I see online entrepreneurs make across the board. Uh, it applies in a lot of different areas. Uh, I also have a checklist on social media, which you can get at social media dot your online genius dot com again social media dot your online genius dot com it's a checklist that kind of goes over the big concepts of what you need to do and avoid in your social media uh, practice uh, to get give yourself the best protection legally so that's it for today hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you back here next week where we'll be talking about legal issues related to course creation